guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're doing my August reading wrap-up. So, in case you're not familiar, I do two separate wrap-ups. I do an audiobook and a physical reading wrap-up. Today is the reading wrap-up. It's very small, but that's kind of been typical for this year. <laughs> Stay tuned tomorrow for my audiobook wrap-up, which is pretty giant, and I'm very excited to talk about all those things. But for now, we're gonna get into the books that I physically read for the month. Of August. Also, quick note, I fall themed my shelves. I know it's like a little bit dark on this side. I think I'm gonna like switch out the book that I have over here and you can't entirely tell unless I move around a bunch, but it's really cute and festive so enjoy. Okay, so I read a total of three books for August. I was doing like really good at first and then I finished like two halves of other books that'll probably be done in September so just stay tuned. But first we're going to talk about one that I DNF'd. Okay, so I DNF'd The Hike by Drew Maggery. This will be talked about in my hikeathon vlog, so I don't want to say too much and spoil it. If that vlog is already out, I'll link it up here in the cards. I chose this mainly because it's about a guy that goes on a hike and encounters all these crazy things, but it was horrible. I literally only read 20 pages and I was like, nope. It had terrible writing from what I could tell and you can kind of just get that feeling like right off the bat. Also, like it started out with him finding like a young girl that was murdered and like the murderer was dragging her off and he was wearing the skin of a Rottweiler's face over his face. I was just like, no. I picked this up at Dollar Tree. It was definitely a miss, but I've gotten really good things at Dollar Tree, so you never know. So I'm glad I gave it a shot. It seemed fun. It was not from what I read and I just decided it wasn't worth it. <laughs> then another sour note. I read The Betrothed by Kira Cass. Um... I don't understand this book. Can somebody please DM me on Instagram so we can talk about this? Because what was this? I just want to make it clear. I do not go into books to criticize them. If I do criticize them, it's because it naturally comes up, but I'm not going into books ever being like, let's see if I like this and pinpoint all the mistakes and the problematic errors and all that crap. Like, I'm not that kind of a reviewer. And I love the selection. I don't care that it was cheesy. I don't care that they weren't the best well-written books of all time. I read most of them in two days. Love them. Super fun. So I was probably the most excited for this book of all the new releases. I traded for it really early. My sister read it with me. I don't understand what this book is. Like, I thought it was a romance. Kinda. I thought it was about her getting betrothed to the king. Kinda. It just didn't really like have a real plot, especially with how it ended. And then the like romance was crazy insta-lovey. And then all of this drama happened at the end that really was like three books worth. And it was all over the place. It kind of felt like a debut novel to me. I do not want to trash Kira Cass because I love her and I think she's adorable. And I still enjoyed like her writing style. I just don't understand what happened here because I didn't really care about the romance. I didn't care about any of the characters particularly. I didn't really care about the world or the plot. I just wasn't sure what was going on. So, sadly it was like a 2.5 star. I'm very confused. I'm so confused that I'm probably gonna read book two because there's only one more coming out just to kind of figure out what the whole plot is <laughs> for this book and because my sister wants to read it. So, there's that. Then I read this for Scallywagthon, which my video should be out pretty soon. Uh, Lost Boy by Christina Henry. This was kindly sent to me by my friend Britt Nicole. I will link her channel down below. She's a fellow YouTuber. And this is a retelling slash backstory of Captain Hook. And Christina Henry wrote Mermaid, or The Mermaid, which I read last year for Mermaid Marathon. Loved it. I love her writing style. I need to get more books from her. So this was incredible. Kind of classified as like a horror, which I didn't know until I was already reading it. I don't know if I would classify it as that. Definitely trigger warnings for like some kind of more intense gore than I was expecting for a YA book. And it's incredibly dark. I mean, Peter Pan in this is a jerk and he is crazy and kind of a monster and all the boys just follow him and do what they say and Captain Hook is a part of it and it's a whole thing but it was beautiful incredible and it was just I couldn't stop reading it I had to know what happened of course it has a sad ending kind of because you know Captain Hook retelling but if you like Peter Pan stuff go into this go into this wary because it's very 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 dark but also like maybe try it the first part was a little bit slow but then it picks up and it's just and randomly because it was the end of the month and I wanted to read something kind of quickly I picked up The Cold Is In Her Bones by Petronelle Van Arsdale hopefully I'm saying that right I got this one recently 
and I just had a feeling this was going to be like a love it or hate it type of book so I picked it up it's really short and this is kind of loosely 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 based on Medusa myths um, but it's set in kind of giving me like an 1800s vibe and we've got like all these old-fashioned rules and expectations for girls this curse that has hit this town from something that happened in the past which you learn about in the beginning part of the book and basically the girls are scared they're going to be inhabited by a demon and so you're following them and they do all these rituals and things and prayers and stuff to kind of keep that from happening and then they're supposed to be like good girls with their parents and all that kind of stuff so this one was the exact type of feminist book i liked it addressed a lot of the issues that we had like in the past some still in the future of how women were treated and expectations and all that stuff but not in like a really really pushy or man-hating way which i appreciate um and it was just absolutely incredible the writing was just superb I mean, it was absolutely just lyrical and, again, incredibly dark. Uh, a lot darker than I was expecting, but also, like, not scary, just dark and incredibly well written. And it, I literally didn't know what was going to happen. It was not necessarily fast paced, but it was written so beautifully that it felt fast. And I did not know the whole time where this book was going, how it was going to end, and it ended so good i almost cried it was such a special time for me i read this in two days which i have not done in probably like over a year and it just kicked off my fall to a great start it was just incredible there's friendship and kind of magic and demons and parents and love and hate and siblings and oh it's so good and i haven't heard very many people talk about it in book two and they need to so read this five stars oh and lost boy was probably a four star read so that was it those are all of the physical reads i read two i really loved and two were not so great <laughs> so thank you guys for watching stay tuned tomorrow for my audiobook wrap up and i'll see you next time on the bright side bye